it's got a slightly slightly rounded edge uh, the, the, this one is a better better example and this is pretty much the way Alan, it comes from Allen Lacer you've got about 20% oh, of the top of the skew is straight across then it rounds over now so if you got it straight versus rounded which one which one is going to be longer from here to here rounded or straight rounded so theoretically that if it's rounded it gives you a bigger sweet spot when you're doing a planing cut theoretically if it's rounded all the way like this and you might find tools like that it might be useful for some things but when I was coming in to that corner that shoulder when I after I did that pommel cut if it's rounded you can't steer that thing and get that that rounded edge right in, into into that wall like you can a sharp edge here or here and certainly if you have it come straight across like like this one the other thing you can't do if you had it shaped like this or or like this where it's all rounded including up here at the tip it's very difficult for you to take that that peeling cut because for do a peeling cut you got to have a straight the straight surface across there so that's why you sharpen it this way so you can have that peeling cut and you've got a lot of nice control when you want to come into that shoulder if I had to come into the shoulder like this and have that middle hit it you can see the problem is you're going to have the bottoms while it hit it or the tops while it hit it before the, uh, the corner so ideally you'd have no more than uh, about 20% maybe as much as a third but no more than 20% come, should be straight across then you can round it off if you prefer that's that's a personal choice and you'll see different people that will tend to prefer a straight skew others will prefer a rounded skew and others will pick up the straight skew for some things and the rounded skew for others I tend to keep this one I've you know got a little bit straight across this one I kept away on a laser but the one I use every day I haven't messed with I keep it straight across because that's the way I like it so it's, it's there's a personal personal preference to that okay. let's talk about sharpening the skew is the one tool that needs to be very very sharp uh, I can remember several years ago when I was here at a workshop and Michael was assisting and and we were doing something with the skew and he picked up my skew and looked at it and says this is not very sharp and it wasn't uh, to get it sharp, a lot of people have a hard time sharpening a skew, but they shouldn't. It's just not really that difficult, and I'm going to demonstrate, and I'm going to use one of the club ones. Uh, here, here's two of the club tools, both of them with very sharp edges, so I don't like to use them. Nobody's taking time. We don't have a belt sander here. They ought to be run on a belt sander on the edges. Maybe somebody will volunteer to take them home and clean them up on a belt sander. This one now, somebody watched an Allen Lacer or, or listened to somebody talk about a curved skew and thought, okay, then that's how they ought to be ground, and they ground it like that. But guess what? They didn't pay attention to the whole class, and they didn't get the, 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 the part here. Can you switch the camera? No. Oh. <clears throat> they, did, they missed the part of the class that says that first 20, 20 to 30% ought to be straight across. This now renders it, you know, less, less versatile for dueling peeling cut because it's rounded. This one is straight across. Now, they sell jigs, and if you've got a jig and you like it, more power to you. If you're going to buy one and you, got, and you just like to buy tools, go up all, by all means, go out and buy a jig for a skew. I find them kind of useless uh, because all you really need is a, a plate to lay this against. Let's start, before we start that, let's talk a little bit about the angle. Skews generally, you know, they, they're going to vary 
somewhere between typically 30 and, and 50 degrees. And that's what they call the included angle. The included angle is if you take this protractor, that's where you measure this angle right here. Now, this is close to uh, 50 degrees because I use it for big stuff and peeling cuts and so on. This other one is closer to 40 degrees. Uh, say this one right here that's 40 degrees, it's 20 degrees on each side. And the two together uh, come to be 40 degrees. Because you have two sides to it coming together, unlike a bowl gouge where you've got one bevel and this has got two bevels, that's one of the reasons why you have to have the tool rest so high. Because to get that cutting edge, because it's got two edges, it's 20 degrees, it's a much sharper angle, so you've got to have the tool rest up higher to, in order to, to, to be cutting along this edge right here. So a, a happy medium is probably 40 degrees. If you're doing softer woods, like you're doing a lot of pine, you might steer closer to 30 degrees. If you're dealing with some uh, nothing, nothing but very hard woods, you might, and doing a lot of roughing work and a lot of peeling cuts, uh, a planing, uh, mostly peeling cuts, you might uh, want to go closer to, to 50 degrees. It's a personal choice. One technique is you can measure, if you measure the distance, this bevel distance from here to the tip, and if it's one and a half times the thickness, you're going to get pretty close to 40 degrees. So even if you don't have a compass, you can measure that with a ruler. So if this is a, uh, a quarter of an inch thick, then, then this distance here ought to be three-eighths of an inch thick, or this, this width. And that will give you close to a 40 degree angle. So let's straighten out this, this, this leading edge here. And what I like to do is, you know, we're left, some of us favor our left hand, some favor the right hand. We have a tendency to favor something, so you want to have a, a, a method of, when you're sharpening to get it even. Because you skew, you want to do it the same amount on this side as you want to do on this side, because you do want your edge uh, to meet in, in the middle, not off to one side. So you can do that by counting seconds or Mississippis. It would go something like one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi. We come back on the other side. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Uh, and just slide it back and forth. And I'm going to rotate this thing slightly, the handle slightly to the right, because I really want to take off a little more on this, this edge right here and grind it back. So I'm just going to turn this. Instead of having perfectly 90 degrees, I'm going to turn it just the slightest bit. So the goal is to get a nice hollow grind without any, any facets on it, and that's just for that one tip there. And then, to get the rest of it, no problem. I'm just holding it with my thumb. Now, we're not grinding the tool, we're dressing the bevel. The difference is subtle, but it's one of just how much pressure. Somehow down there the heel is where it needed a little bit more. And we have a little tiny little facet underneath. Okay. Now in any sharp tool, you're looking for glint, and if you can see a glint along the edge, that means you've got a flat spot reflecting the light, you don't really have a sharp edge, because a sharp edge is what? Two planes coming together and, and meeting. So if you're seeing a, you know, if it's, if it's like this, you're going to see the glint off of that edge right here. But if you have the two planes meeting, you won't. Now to finish that, now this is a 180 degree uh, CBM wheel and it does a pretty nice job uh, out of the starting gate. This is the one tool that you do real well to, uh, to hone it. And I use a little honing fluid to, to keep the thing a little cleaner. And if you go buy this stuff from uh, Peachtree's got it, the trend stuff. 
uh, ethylene glycol. <laughs> Antifreeze. It's real cheap. Now, is it the same as the stuff you pay $15 for in a bottle? I won't say that. I can't say that. But I have it on pretty good authority. They're pretty doggone close. Now, Alan Lacer, he, he strokes the thing down like this. I have a hard time doing that. I like to get it under my arm like this. The only downside of this, if you're not careful, you'll, you'll round it over. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure you're getting a nice stroke. Yeah, you definitely don't want to do a secondary bevel on that one. You definitely don't want to do a secondary bevel unless you're using it for a specialty cut as a negative rake scraper, but we're not there yet. I have looked for a home like the one you've got, and I'm not finding one. Ken Rizzo, Wooden Wonders, over there in Lawrenceville. Ken Rizzo. He's not here tonight. He was here last. Like, there he is. There's the man. He sells his wonderful CBN home. It's not a diamond home. It's a CBN home. And uh, he's got them at a, at a good good price and good quality. So here's what I'm going to be turning. Basically, it's a it's an angel ornament. I turn a lot of these because I find a good use for them. I can give them away uh, at church, and ladies like them. And there's a retreat I give them do a batch of them for this ladies retreat a couple of times a year. The, one of the things I like about it, it's a great, it, it's more fun than, than working on a two by four, but it gets you the same kind of practice. And you can produce something, uh, and you have something when you finish. And you can use, you can use other tools, but if you say, okay, I'm going to learn how to use a skew, and by the way, I'm going to, when I finish, not only will I have shavings, I'll have this nice Christmas tree ornament. You know, it's a, twice the benefit. So I start off with a little stick about, uh, oh, about four and a half inches wide. This is some, some stuff that I got from John Jones in the back there. Sticks of ambrosia maple. I don't know what somebody's going to use it for, but it makes great little angels. Now, this ripple. When I'm in a hurry, I'll raise that ripple. You don't have to worry about getting any skate back because that, that heel is buried underneath that ripple. The bad news is, is you're not getting the very best, very best cut because you're really forcing, ripping those fibers loose. But if you're in a hurry and you're just rough cutting it, it doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about it. You just, you know, you get in there and head across. This is a little longer than I usually use. See, this is that sharp edge I was talking about, skating along the top of my, my tool rest. It's kind of digging in a little bit. So the first thing I do is put a tenon on this thing, and that's one of those appealing cut you can use. And you see, if I had that Allen Lacer skew, I'd have a hard time getting in there. Now I'm going to tilt it back and lift it up just a little bit because the set of jaws I'm going to use are a dovetail jaw. Just by tilting it a little bit, I get just a, a hint of a dovetail. It's not essential, but it, it gives it a little extra grip in the chuck jaws that I use for these little projects. I use the Nova Chuck. How many of y'all use Technic Tool Chucks? You know, um, they're pretty good chucks. I've been happy with them. I got start off with the first one, kept buying them. If I bought a, if I had started with a Vic Mark, I'd probably been a lot happier. But I didn't start with Vic Mark, so I kept buying Technic Tool Chuck. But one of the things that Technic Tool Chuck does not have is they don't have a set of jaws like this. This is a 35 millimeter set of jaws, and this set of jaws is from uh, Sorby, and it's. Uh, for their Patriot Chuck, which I like, the Patriot Chuck is very much like the Supernova 2, except I think it's a little better machined. They're both made in China. But it comes with a, with a jaw set that's a better size 
tenon for smaller projects that you know smaller than you could you could hold in your uh, number two or 50 millimeter jaws but there's one that's even better than this and that's the one by record power they also have a knockoff for a supernova 2 and a, and a knockoff of this g3 uh, and they have a set of jaws that look just like this except it has the same hawk tooth or hawk bill hawk tooth i guess they call it yeah this is a this jaw set confuses a lot of people. It's dovetail on the outside, but on the inside, if you read the manufacturer, of course, a lot of guys don't like to read instructions, but if you read the instructions, it says make a parallel tenon. And this tiny little dovetail bites into the wood. If you try to cut a dovetail, you have a tendency to screw it up and you weaken the hole. Well, I really like this design. It doesn't damage the wood. It grasps. It's real easy to do a, a, a parallel tenon, easier than it is to do a dovetail. Well, Record Power says has a set of jaws that look almost just like this, except they have that same hawk tooth on it, which I wish I'd known about before I got these sorbet, but it is what it is. All right, now let's talk about some alternatives. Now, what's the best alternative to a uh, for a peeling cut? If you don't use a skew, Ruffing gouge. this is on the test. Ruffing. Ruffing gouge. Spindle roughing gouge. Don Griffith can use a bowl gouge. <laughs> then we got a then we got a planing cut. Same thing. Well, actually, the spindle roughing gouge. That's another story we didn't talk about. That, but I say a peeling cut. Spindle roughing gouge. Same thing. If it's ground straight across. You've got this edge, you can come in here and do a planing cut. If you happen to be using this tool and you're just doing one little cut, why get another tool? It'll work. Now, let's see what we got here in the box. He's got a piece of crap. <laughs> Spindle roughing gouges, and they're all rounded. Okay, works pretty great for a <coughs> planing cut, but guess what? It's the same problem we have with this. If we try to go in here and do this, it won't work because it's round. <coughs> Very bad design. It's not just a grind. It's the way this thing is, the flute design. It's just a... In my personal opinion, it's a piece of crap. <laughs> okay, so there's, so there's that... Uh, Spindle roughing gouge. Now, planing cut is one I really meant to say. Spindle roughing gouge. It'll definitely do do a, 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 a as good a job. You're cutting it the same way. You're cutting at an angle, 45 degree or so. The only difference is how have you honed it? Have you sharpened it as sharp as a skew? And if you sharpen it as sharp as a skew, and you use a hone, and maybe you get the inside of the flute with with this large edge. Make sure you don't have any, you know, any, any burrs raised in there. There's no reason why you won't get just as good a planing cut or, or doggone close as you would with a skew. So that is an alternative. Now then the V-cut. All right. What could compete with a skew on a V-cut? Party's tool. The, the no, can't you can't make a V out of a square. Detail gouge. Detail gouge will get you close. But it won't get you the same way. It can get close. You come in here with this, and yeah, you can make a V-cut. The problem is, because of this design, even if it's, you make the heel go away and, and you have a real sharp point, you're not going to get as deep before you start getting jammed in there. That may not be a problem if you're not doing really deep Vs, but it is an alternative but it's not as good an alternative if you got to cut deep Vs. The, the skew is kind of uh, uh, excels in that, that area. So. so the V is detail gouge. Now detail gouge is different from a regular spindle gouge. And it, it, the, the, it, the flute is very, very shallow maybe 20%, whereas this might have, I don't know, 40%. As a result of that, you got more steel underneath it, 
support you. These are both 3 8 inch tools, both of them made by the same so manufacturer. So is that just the way you grab, is that no. just the way you sharpened it? No. It's bought that way? No, it's bought that way. It is because it's got a different flute design. One has got a design like this, and the other one has got a design, I know it's hard to see this, it's just not as deep. It's very, very shallow. Very, it's easier to see this, I think, if we turn it this way. Overhead. So it's by the nature of the way that you can't, there's some things you just can't do with sharpening. You can't turn a spindle gouge into a bowl gouge. You can't turn a bowl gouge into a spindle gouge because the flute design, are, are, they're, they're, they're different. And it'll affect, you know, what, whether it's got a point and how far you can bring the wings back. You can bring the wings back further on this detail gouge and still have a lot of steel hanging over the tool rest. And it comes, you can get it to a fairly sharp point. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, advantages of getting it into some tight detail. Okay, beating to so beating the alternative as I showed you, you got a beating tool. You've also got a spindle gouge uh, is another alternative. And if you're doing small beads, uh, little bitty beads, I find that this uh, this round point tool works out real well. How much time do I have here? Three minutes. Three minutes. All right, we're good. So with this, you know, there's a little tiny little V cut. You don't need a skew for that. And if you want to make a little bead, you just drop the handle, roll it across the top, and you're using it as a scraper. But you know, what's faster than that? Very fast, the tiny little beads. Uh, facing cut. I showed you a bowl gouge it is an advantage. Uh, it'll take off more, and because it's slicing and peeling at the same time, you're going to get a finer cut. Uh, we didn't talk about a uh, negative rake scraper, but you can take your skew. You hear people joking about that, but you know, you put a burr on one side with a hone or off the grinder, and you can use this flat to profile, actually, and you can hold it flat because you're still, the edge is still going downhill. You know, scraper normally you got to have the handle up. Well, you got to have the edge pointing down. Well, you do this side. You do this flat, and you got the edge going down. And you can you can refine the edge of a bowl. Um, thank you.